Welcome into Starcade Media, everyone. I'm Noah Groniger. And if you're new to this channel or you haven't already for some reason, hit the subscribe button. Also, click that bell so you get notified of all the new videos that we're going to be posting. And on this video, if you could give us a like and a comment, it would be much appreciated. Today, we're going to be talking about the Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers. There's been a lot of overhaul already this offseason. As everybody knows, before last season, we traded away the generational talent, my favorite receiver, Tyreek Hill, and I still don't know how we amassed the receiving core that we did and was able to get all the way through a season and win Super Bowl 57. Obviously, you've got Patrick Mahomes, you've got Travis Kelsey, and you've got Andy Reid. They're able to figure things out and make up for maybe the lack of talent you have in the receiver room. Now we're going to look at some numbers here because I want to go over kind of what these guys did last season and why it's not that big a loss, but we're not filling the holes. So maybe it is a big loss. So let's take a look at this right here. The Chiefs wide receivers in receiving yards in 2022 last year, obviously Juju with 933 yards, maybe kind of could have gone over a thousand if he wasn't injured here and there last season uh, with a dealing with a knee. And then you've got MVS, 687 yards. He's kind of your career 50% guy uh, catching. And he's just not really that stud receiver that you can count on week in and week out. And then Justin Watson, who, what? Uh, the kind of a cast off from Tampa Bay and Tom Brady. He didn't really like what he saw in him. Chiefs bring him over here. 315 yards. Nicole Hardman, 297. And as we know, he was dealing with that pelvic midsection core injury whatever it was it's kind of all the way through the end of uh, last season into the playoffs and then sky Moore, the rookie 250 yards no touchdowns during the regular season this is we all know that what he did in the afc championship game with the big punt return and then the touchdown in the super bowl and then Kadarius tony coming over from the giants 171 receiving yards and uh, we've heard a lot of chatter this offseason talking about he's going to be the number one receiver. The Chiefs really want him to be the number one receiver moving forward as we kind of go on here with the Tony experiment. But like I said, three of these guys have moved on. Juju is now with the Patriots. Justin Watson, just a free agent. We'll see if he can catch on somewhere. Good special teamer, good guy in spot duty. I mean, if the Chiefs aren't going to go after De DeAndre Hopkins or an Odell Beckham, Maybe Justin Watson can come back. I doubt it. But McCall Hardman moves on to the New York Jets. I'm kind of glad this is over with. I wanted DK Metcalf. Instead, we got McCall Hardman. And yeah, he was a jet sweep gadget guy. Had a pretty good game against the 49ers. But I just don't think he was ever going to be the route runner and the consistent guy that was going to be on the same page, locate a football that you can count on and trust. Down in, down out, play in, play out, season in, season out. So I think that's why the Chiefs moved on from him, even with the small number that he's getting from the Jets uh, in salary. So you look at these guys, and there's not a lot of excitement. Obviously, Tony gives you a lot of juice, but he's got some injury concerns. Sky Moore had a really lackluster rookie year. Maybe you're hoping that the punt return and what you saw, in that touchdown in the Super Bowl, and here and there, he had a big catch, I think, week one against the Cardinals. But here and there, he's had some flashes where he's getting open. He's getting the separation. He's got good hands. Got a little bit of wiggle that you're hoping that next year he can break out and have a really big sophomore season for the Chiefs. MVS, man, if not for that AFC Championship game where he came up huge because Juju goes down, McColl goes down, Tony goes down, so you're left with Justin Watson, Sky Moore, MVS, Marcus Kemp was out there running routes. It would look like a dire situation, but MVS six for 116 and a touchdown. Wow. When you needed someone to step up big, MVS did it. And I think that's kind of a big reason why he's sticking around uh, at least for one more year. But the Chiefs are going to have to do something, guys. Like I said, Pac-Man Jones uh, was on Pat McAfee, and that's why I was like, are they going to bring DeAndre Hopkins back or not? Pac-Man Jones said there's five teams out there. There's the Patriots, there's the Ravens, there's the Falcons, there's the Raiders, and there's the Bills. Those are the five that, for two, according to his sources, are the ones in and still interested on DeAndre Hopkins. So if the Chiefs aren't in that, what, how, why, what's going to happen? Are they going to draft someone with a first pick, uh, their first round pick, uh, this next month when the draft comes to Kansas City at Union Station? Because 
they got to add some pieces to this receiving core. If not, I don't think you can trust the health of Kadarius Tony going into the season. I don't think you can trust the consistency of MVS. And I don't think you can trust that uh, everything's going to click for Sky Moore in a sophomore season. Those are all hopes. We hope Tony stays healthy. We hope MVS can be more consistent and show us more along the lines of what we saw in the AFC Championship game. We hope Sky Moore, everything clicks for him and he can line up in the right spot, which he struggled with in the Super Bowl and in the AFC Championship game, lining up in the right spot. And we're going to need someone, I think, back there on special teams too to take kind of a load off Kadarius Tony. If you you want him to be your number one wide receiver, I don't think you want him back there returning punts and some occasional kickoffs. So that's going to be a big question mark. But interesting, the Pac-Man Jones, what he said, the five teams that were he's said that were in and interested in DeAndre Hopkins. He also contradicted himself later saying, well, it's not about the money. He wants to win. He wants to win. That's great. Then why isn't Kansas City listed? You've got the Raiders. He wants to win. That's not happening there. The Falcons, he wants to win. Not happening there. The Ravens with everything in flux with Lamar Jackson. I wouldn't trust that it's going to happen there. That doesn't look like it's going to get resolved anytime soon, even if it does. And then the Patriots, that's not happening there. They don't know if it's Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones or what's going on. Who's calling the offense? It's Bill O'Brien now. But Bill Belichick had a hand in it last year with Matt Patricia, a defensive coordinator he had calling it. It's just kind of a mess ever since Tom Brady left. Bill Belichick trying to figure out how things work, how much he needs to be involved in the offensive side. And it has just been a disaster. So really the Bills is the only team that makes sense on Pac-Man Jones' list but one that's made sense this whole time has been reported on is the Kansas city chiefs. And so I don't know why Pac-Man wouldn't have him on there. I don't know if he's a hater, if he's mad, former Bengal, if he's mad that the chiefs finally got their one victory over Joe Burrow and the Bengals in the AFC championship game, shutting them out of the super bowl for a second straight year. while the chiefs go and win super bowl 57 and he just wants to rile up the chiefs fans. That's what I think it think it is because if he wants to win, it's not about money then Kansas city has got to be on the list. But let's go and look. I'm going to throw up a graphic here because I want to talk about Justin Ross and John Ross, two guys that a lot of people have some hopes in. Uh, if you look at their body types with Justin Ross being 6'4", 205 pounds, and John Ross being a quick guy at 5'11", 190, maybe that J- Justin Ross's body type, you're saying, maybe that can make up for Juju. John Ross, his body type, his speed, maybe that can make up for McCole Hardman. But that's something, those are just hopes. You're hoping on that, and that's all it is, is hope. Because we're looking at Justin Ross here. Uh, Back in college, he had a congenital fusion in his spine, a condition he was born with called Klippofiel syndrome. And that surgery, everything that was involved in that was a complete removal of a disc in his neck and stabilization of the joint. Man, you just can't count on him being healthy. And they they say that no player diagnosed with Klippofiel syndrome has ever been cleared for play at the NFL level due to the risk of catastrophic injury. And a doctor said it's because of the flexibility and shape of the neck that has been altered. So he's got to overcome a lot just to get on the field and be healthy and be a body that you can count on and rely on. He also had two foot surgeries, one in November of 2021. And then he just said it didn't feel right, didn't feel like it it was responding the way he wanted it to. So he wanted it clean up and kind of redo it. And so in July of 2022, before training camp, he gets surgery on that same foot again. And now we see him running hills and it doing drills. And it looks like hopefully he'll at least be able to get out there for training camp and give it a go in preseason and see what we have in him. Uh, His 40 yard dash 4.63. That's not bad for a guy his size. It's not terrible anyway. And you see this play on a loop from OTAs with the amazing catch. We know his ability. We know his hands. It's just about if he can stay healthy. And if he is the same Justin Ross we saw before, he was kind of diagnosed with this congenital fusion of the spine, clipophile syndrome, and before his foot surgeries. If he can get back to how he was at Clemson before his last year there, then we've we found something. But that's just a hope. You can't count on that. That's why we need more wide receivers in this room. John Ross, the fastest 40-yard dash in NFL scouting combine history. That gets you excited. He was drafted number nine overall to the Bengals in 2017. One pick ahead of Patrick Mahomes, but it just hasn't worked out to him because he didn't play last season. 
His last season playing was 2021 with the Giants, where he had 11 catches for 224 yards and a touchdown. He's 27 years old, so you'd think he still has some juice in the tank. The Chiefs are going to kick the tires, and like I said, his body size, his speed, he could be a, a replacement for McCall Hardman. But again, it's just these are hopes and wishes. If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a wonderful Christmas. But I don't think we're going to have a wonderful Christmas because I just don't think you can count on these guys to come in and really contribute meaningful snaps to this team. That's why we need a DeAndre Hopkins and probably someone high in the draft, a first round, second round, third round pick that comes in and picks things up quick. But we saw with McCole Hardman, we saw with Sky Moore, Andy Reid doesn't like playing some of these rookies especially at the receiver position it's tough to pick up his offense so the Chiefs are gonna have to figure something out I love wide receivers it is my most favorite position and that's why last year I was freaking out when we traded Tyreek Hill I was like it's over there's no way how do we compete in the AFC West with all the additions that these teams have made how do we win a Super Bowl how do we do this with Juju Smith-Schuster and MVS and no Tyreek Hill but they did it. And people say, just trust in Veach. And yes, that is true. Although he hasn't had a great history of drafting receivers. He's great in the draft everywhere else, but the receiver position has left a lot to be desired uh, for Brett Veach so far. Maybe this will be the season he can pick one and he'll be a stud and we can count on him for the next 10 years. That'd be great. That's what we need. And we also need either, either Odell Beckham or, and he's got injury concerns, so I'm not too sure about that again i don't know how much you can count on him and trust that that acl that he's had two acl surgeries on that you can count on that and you can count on him to be there for the long haul i think you got to make deandre hopkins happen whether it's a third round pick fourth round pick restructure his contract you got to get a stud wide receiver in here because i think last year people can say all they want well we did it last year with receivers that people didn't think we could do it with we'll do it again I think you won despite that. And it's not trust in Veach for me. It's trust in Patrick Mahomes. He overcame the odds at the receiver position, the lack of talent, the lack of separation, and got it done despite that. That's why he is the best quarterback in the National Football League and uh, on pace to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time. But we need a far better receiving core than what we have right now with MVS, Sky, Kadarius Tony, and I guess Justin Ross and John Ross, and you could throw in your Jerry and Ely's and uh, Marset Smith and whatever else we've got on the practice squad because Cornell Powell, I forgot to mention the great Cornell Powell. We need some juice to this wide receiving core, and that's why I think we need DeAndre Hopkins plus a rookie. So guys, let me know in the comments, are you okay with the receiving core where it is? Maybe just add a rookie, just kind of whatever it is. We're going to be fine because we got Mahomes and we trust in Veach. Or do you think we need a DeAndre Hopkins? You think we need a vet in that receiving room, a trusted, reliable weapon that Mahomes knows in crunch time, in situational football, when we need a first down, when we need someone to go to, we need to have someone we can trust. And that's a DeAndre Hopkins. Obviously, we got Travis Kelsey. So let me know in the comments. Please, again, give this video a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. As always, this is Noah Groniger right here on Starcade Media. We thank you all for watching. Until next time, go Chiefs!